वेलकम टू माय वीकली मार्केट राउंड अप 23 नवंबर 2019 आई एम सकनंदी आई एम द डिजाइनर एंड डेवलपर ऑफ क्यू ट्रेडिंग सिस्टम्स एंड टेक्निक्स आई यूज्ड टू वर्क इन इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी मोस्टली इन सिंगापुर आई रिटायर्ड फ्रॉम वर्क सेवरल इयर्स अगो नाउ इट इज आई एम लिविंग इन थाईलैंड एंड स्विंग ट्रेडिंग स्टॉक्स you may contact me using my email id tradingprofitably at gmail.com i regularly share stock analysis in my open to the public traders forum sagannandi.com and also on my twitter page sagannandi and regularly post videos in my youtube channel trading profitably all of these resources are open to the public and you are most welcome to use them before beginning today's market round up let me go through the disclaimer this demonstration is for educational purposes only it is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques i use the information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading past performance is no guarantee of future return I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual in today's topics, I will analyze oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. After that, I will try to identify potential trades using complete 360 degrees analysis that is trades where the market sector industry fundamental and technical forces all are aligned that was the last slide of the presentation i will continue now with live system I begin the commodities analysis using oil ETF USO, analyzing it using the weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on or entry chart template. Together I call this at a glance template because using this simple template you can decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. One week ago I mentioned that the weekly and daily also was inside a range bound by the resistance memory trend line at the top and support memory trend line at the bottom that was not the optimal location to take any new trade i suggested staying away from any new trade in the previous market roundup and this week also it is in the middle of the range and you may avoid taking any new long trade or new short trade for that matter. Could you take any trade during the week? Yes, you could take that on this day, Tuesday. Oil drop and precisely stopped at the memory support line next day price went up when the price was going up on wednesday you could take a long position in oil either using the fine-tuned real-time chart probably using early range breakout technique or you could entered the long position as price was going above previous day's high. In either case, you would end up with a profitable swing trade by the end of Friday. What technique could you use in entering the trade? The technique that I mentioned in the previous roundup also, that when an instrument is in a sideways range, the optimal entry point comes at the edges. In this case, the lower edge was formed by this memory support line in the daily chart. 
you could start to look for the long opportunity as price hit the lower edge and take the long trade the very next day, probably well ahead of others. Now price is in the middle of the range, in the daily chart also, and if you didn't take the long trade earlier at the lower edge, you may avoid taking any new long trade right now. The weekly backdrop color is bullish. The daily traffic light color is also bullish on Friday. Therefore, there is no scope of taking any short trade right now. This is a 10 minute chart of US oil using the Q fine tune or precise entry chart template. Let me demonstrate how you could use this real time fine tune chart to enter a long trade in US oil very precisely. On Tuesday, USO fell down. It precisely hit the memory support line that was in the daily chart also and closed very close to that memory support line, slightly above the memory support. Next day, Wednesday, price opened at this point. Soon after that, the early range high and early range low levels form. You were going to look for only a long opportunity and when price went above the early range high on this candle, you could take the long position using a 5 minute chart interval. I tend to use the 10 minute interval in the afternoon session and 5 minute interval in the morning session. Following that, you would enter the long position in US oil somewhere in the middle of the sand color candle. Your entry point would be somewhere here and stop would be just below early range low. And as price went up, it covered much more than the risk distance. This was the risk distance and you had an intraday profit that was several times more than the risk taken in the trade, you could book partial profit if you wanted to or you could hold on to the position as well. After that, price went up further, giving you a trade with a very high reward risk ratio. In effect, you could take a swing trade entry using 5 or 10 minute chart interval. This tend to give very high reward risk ratio as was true in this case. How can you learn more about the Eticlance template, the fine tune precise entry template and the techniques to use them? You can find out complete information about that from the books I have put together in the topic under the book category in my forum. You may also visit my YouTube channel Trading Profitably and refer to the videos under tutorial category as well as all the featured videos. From these books and the videos, you will have a very clear idea about the systems and techniques that I use. Now I start with the gold ETF GLD. If you are following my weekly market roundups, you would know that when price fell down heavily in this week, I suggested not taking any new short trade. Why? Because at that time the daily was at or below the lower boundary level. That was oversold area. After that, I suggested that if price could go up little bit and then till down, giving a magenta color candle, that could give a go with flow short trade opportunity. In the previous week, that opportunity didn't come, but it came on this Thursday. We had the magenta color candle in the daily chart and the weekly was also magenta. Therefore, on Thursday, you had a go with flow 
trend following short setup your stop would be just above recent high and your initial target would be at the lower boundary level entry price was at the close of thursday that seemed to give at least one is to one reward risk ratio you could take the trade on thursday at market close or you could take it on friday using real time fine tune chart this is the fine tune or precise entry template using 10 minute interval for gold on thursday price closed at this point that was the time when the daily gave the magenta flow color candle and you had a go with flow trend following short trade setup if we were able to take the trade at the close of thursday that would be fine if you were busy or you were at work at that time then you would have to take the trade the next day friday and this is how you could take it on friday price opened at this point the blue pivot level soon after that automatically this early range low and early range high levels were drawn you were going to look for only short trade because that direction was decided based on the go with flow setup that you found out from the at a glance template when price went below the early range low right at that point you could take the short trade your entry would be just below the early range low and your stop would be just above early range high so your risk distance was this much as price fell down hit the other pivot levels this white pause pivot level magenta previous days close or red previous days low all these pivot levels for each of them you had much more than the risk distance covered you could book partial profit or if you wanted to you could hold on to the position full position as a swing trade after commodities i continue with the market level analysis that is the highest level of the 360 degrees analysis that i carry out to look for low risk high probability stock trades in the previous market roundup i suggested caution because even the weekly was overbought for 3 weeks at that time this week also it is remaining overbought therefore it is now overbought for four successive weeks last week i suggested caution and that was timely this week we have an indecisive shape candle at the top that is a warning sign this week price actually dropped little bit you know that from the volume bar being in red color that is what we see from the weekly chart in the daily price is still going up it did display a bearish headwind possible reversal signal this week there was no headwind reversal trade setup at minimum looking at the headwind signal you would apply protective trailing stop for any long position that you might have there is no short trade setup at the right edge if you had a long position you may continue to hold on to that position with a trailing stop you may not enter a new long trade in spy right now because the weekly is very overbought this week's candle shape is indecisive and the daily is also at the upper boundary level nasdaq etf qqq here also we have an indecisive shape candle in the weekly chart and unlike in spy where the weekly backdrop color remained cyan bullish here we have a neutral backdrop color now showing that this week 
QQQ underperformed SPY. QQQ also dropped slightly. The volume bar is in red color. It is remaining overbought in the weekly chart. In the daily, it is continuing in an uptrend, pretty close to the upper boundary level. There is no short trade setup and it is overbought. Therefore, you may avoid taking any new long trade. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA, a picture very similar to SPY. This week's candle shape is indecisive. The color is remaining bullish. Overbought for four successive weeks now and this week price dropped slightly. In the daily, it is continuing in an uptrend too close to the upper boundary level to take any new long trend. Russell 2000 ETF IWM. Here the weekly is moving sideways for three weeks now. This week's candle shape is indecisive and the color is neutral. It displayed a bear release signal. Price dropped slightly from the previous week. In the daily, it displayed a bearish headwind at the very top of the recent up move, right at the very top. And at that time, price also created a false breakout at this watermark pivot level. Looking at that, you could take a reversal trade using the box trade setup in addition to using the headwind reversal signal. You could take the trade probably using short call vertical. The headwind signal could catch the very top. The watermark resistance proved robust. Price came down little bit from there. Any trade taken using short Call vertical would have significant profit by this Friday. Right now, I will not initiate any new trade in IWM because the weekly is indecisive and the daily is gradually moving down but not moving down very fast. What did you see from the market level analysis? that the market stopped at the very top. It displayed indecisive shape candle at the very top in all the four market ETFs in the weekly charts. That is a sign of warning. Indecisive shape candle at the very top may lead to a price drop, at least a pullback. In the previous market roundup, the sectors were also not very bullish. This is the second level of the 360 degrees analysis, just below the market level, the sector level analysis. Here is the one month sector performance. This is what I shared in the previous market roundup. At that time itself, I showed that from 11 sectors up to zero down, it transitioned to eight up to three down, and then it transitioned to five up to six down. That is over two weeks period, next five days and the previous week. The sector level was gradually weakening. You can also see that from the bars, blue bars, that is this two weeks period, were all to the right of the zero level. So in this two weeks period, all the sectors were up. What about the one week period? After that, the green bars, it was mixed. Though more were on the positive side and some on the negative side. What happened to previous week? It was balanced slightly bearish because 5 went up and 6 went down. Several of the sectors were up and several of the sectors were down. But as you can see, the down sectors were down by bigger percentages.
this is what I shared in the previous market roundup and based on this I suggested caution and how is the sector picture this week this week it weakened further this week only three sectors are up and eight are down again you can see the transition clearly in the blue period two weeks period nine were up two were down after that one week ago five were up six were down and this week only three are up eight are down gradually the sectors are weakening this week which sectors are up healthcare is up by the biggest percentage that is a defensive sector utilities is the third sector that is up that is also defensive communications you may consider it somewhat defensive somewhat non-defensive now there are non-defensive stocks also in communication services on the downside energy and material are down by biggest percentages they are non-defensive sectors real estate is also down that may be considered a defensive sector there is some mixed picture between the defensive and non-defensive sectors some defensive sectors are down like real estate whereas defensive sectors like healthcare utilities are up non-defensive sectors are mostly down energy materials consumer discretionary information technology industrials non defensives are mostly down that is also showing weakness in the market apart from the obvious degradation of the up and down sectors though the market was going up the sector level analysis already showed us weakness one week ago and this week the sector level is showing even more weakness not a time where I will suggest taking many new long positions at the same time market is not coming down you may not take any short trade but you may create a short list of stocks that may fall down what kind of stocks you will look into you will look into stocks that are fundamentally overvalued, technically overbought, and in industries that are starting to go down. You could identify those trades using sector industry rotation analysis and then further drilling down into the stocks fundamentals and technicals. This is another view of the sectors. This heat map and scorecard shows the sector rotation clearly. You can see the sector strength across 12 monthly review periods, then more frequently over 10 day, 5 day periods, etc. Cyan represents strength, magenta represents weakness. Other than the strength scores, the base column shows acceleration, deceleration. Again, cyan is strength, acceleration, and magenta is deceleration. Using the strength, you would look for buying opportunities in healthcare and communication services. And you could look for shorting opportunities in energy, materials, and real estate. Communication services is one that is the second strongest and it is also accelerating the most as you can see from the base column. If I open up the more recent periods of two day and one day, you can see that it was weak earlier, magenta color, and now it is steadily gaining strength. Over five day, it is the second best performer and over one day, that is Friday, it is the very best performer. 
you may therefore drill down into communication services to look for buy setups that will give you a buying opportunity in a sector that was weak earlier and just now starting to turn around why don't I drill down into the communication services industries these are the industries I can double click on any column header to sort by that column and double click again to reverse the sort order sign is strength I am looking for the strongest of the communication services industries those will be the ones shown by sign color and I am looking for industries that are strong not only over five day but are maintaining their strength over two day and one day period that will be these three industries broadcasting wireless telecom services and integrated telecom services now I can drill down into the industries to look for stocks these are the stocks some of the larger stocks in these three industries all belonging to the strong communication services sector you may look for buy setups based on valuation or you may look for buy setups based on earnings growth I see that DISCA is a stock that is in the middle in terms of valuation the valuation score is not magenta magenta would be overvalued not cyan that would be undervalued it is yellow the valuation is in the middle however it is showing strong earnings growth in all the last three quarterly periods therefore you could consider buying the stock based on earnings growth fundamental strength just as the industry was strengthening and the sector was also strengthening you would take the actual long position based on technical setup let me look at the stock using Q charts this is DISCA in the daily chart in this area it was moving inside a side wise range then it broke out of the range with a strongly bullish candle I am not fond of chasing stocks therefore I would avoid buying at this point instead I would wait for a pullback and then price to go up again giving me the first cyan color candle that would be the signal for go with flow trend following long trend you could take the long at the close of that day putting stop just below recent low and as price went up from there it has already covered the risk distance following discipline I would book partial profit would I book full profit no right because there also I use very clear guideline if the industry is strong fundamentals are strong and technically the chart is looking bullish there is no reason to exit the full position therefore I would book partial position profit with discipline and try to let profit run on the remaining position with a trailing stop in place so that the entire trade is almost guaranteed risk free from now onward did the trade in DISCA seem familiar in my trading I use only a handful of trade setups in fact only one setup for one market condition only one setup for trending market that was the setup go with flow setup that I could identify in DISCA using 360 degrees analysis I regularly share such analysis in my traders forum recently in the 
USA 360 degrees analysis group, I shared another go with flow trend following trade setup that was in CNC. CNC is a healthcare stock. How is the healthcare industry? You can see that healthcare industry is the strongest now. It is strongest now, but it was relatively weaker earlier. And when the sector was strengthening at that time, not now, when it was strengthening, you could identify long trades, very low risk, high probability trades using the 360 degrees analysis. And CNC was such a trade I shared. Let me review the CNC trade. I shared the long setup in the public traders forum on this day. That was again a go with flow trend following long trade setup. Entry would be at the close of that day, stop would be just below recent low. That would be just below that day's candle. And as price went up, covered the risk distance, I booked partial profit. I held on to partial position because the industry was strong. The stock's fundamentals were strong and the technicals were also bullish. Now I am continuing to hold on to partial position using trailing stop. This week the stock went up further, therefore my profit on the remaining position increased further. If it drops, I have the trailing stop in place. I will exit the remaining position also with a significant profit. In this way, I book partial profit with discipline once the risk distance was covered and then I could let profit run on the remaining position. In the case of CNC and also DISCA, I started with the sector level analysis, drilled down into the strongest sectors, then found some of the strongest industries and then further drilled down into strong fundamental stocks giving technical trade setup. However, as I tend to say, the sector level is too broad. If you start from the sector level, you may miss some of the lucrative trading opportunities. Let me illustrate with a live example. This week, materials is not one of the strongest sectors. The strongest sectors over five-day period are communication services and healthcare, these two, not materials. However, if I drill down into the material sector, And let me sort over one week period, five day period. Now you can see some of the materials industries are among the strongest. Those are shown by bold case scores. And some other materials industries are among the weakest, shown by the bold case in the magenta color scores. Overall, the sector is weak because more industries are weak than strong. However, if we looked at only the sector level, we wouldn't drill down into the strong materials industries. That's why I suggest to find the lucrative opportunities. You may look at the sector level, but also look at the industry level. For buy setups, look at the strongest industries. These are the strongest industries of the current week, and steel is one of them. Steel was weaker earlier. The score was in magenta color, and now it is becoming stronger. This is the time where you may look for a buy setup. And I shared a possible buying opportunity on Friday using live market data. I shared it also on my Twitter page. 
twitter.com sagar nandi this was the post time to buy this steel stock i shared it 22 hours ago on friday during market hours let me look at the analysis again the same 360 degrees analysis that i always carry out looking at the industry fundamental and technicals as of that time that was about 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on 22nd November, Friday. I saw the industry was strengthening. That was the industry level analysis. Then in terms of fundamentals, I found CLF as a stock that is undervalued. The valuation score is in cyan color. It has a short squeeze potential and as of that time it was up by 6.7%. Fundamentally, I had reasons to consider buying the stock. The industry was strong. Last step would be to look at the technical charts. And this is how the chart was looking at that time. Earlier it was inside a triangle pattern. And then on Friday, it was breaking out of the triangle pattern with a very bullish shape, bullish color candle. Let me now see how it closed the day because any of the signals that I use for swing trading, they are to be confirmed by the close of the day. All the snapshots were as of around 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Looking at that, I would start to be ready to buy the stock but would wait to see how the stock ends the day. Let me look at CLF now how it closed on Friday using the weekly daily at a glance template and instantly you can see now the daily has broken out of the Trend line resistance. It indeed closed the day with a bullish shape, bullish color candle, and with very high activity. In the weekly, interestingly, the bullish headwind could capture the very bottom. After that, it moved sideways for a while, and this week it moved up strongly. The weekly is bullish. And the daily is bullish. It gave a breakout long setup on Friday. If you took the trade, your entry price would be at the close of Friday and you could put stop just below recent low. You could place it just below the memory trend line support and you could try to book partial profit if this wide direction line is hit. This was yet another 360 degrees trading opportunities that you could identify using real-time market analysis. All the tools that I use, sector industry, rotation analysis, fundamental analysis and technical analysis can be used in real-time mode. Let me summarize now. The market was bullish for several weeks. One week ago itself i suggested caution based on the fact that the etfs were overbought and the sector analysis was showing weakness that was very timely this week all the market etfs displayed indecisive shape candle in the weekly charts at the very top that is a cautionary signal the sectors also are showing cautionary signal they weakened further from the past week. You may avoid taking new long positions, especially in overbought or overvalued stocks. Whatever be the market condition though, as the examples of CNC, DISCA, and the last example of CLF that I shared on Friday, illustrate that whatever be the market condition you can always find low risk high probability trading opportunities using 360 degrees approach where you are 
aligning the market level, sector industry level and technical forces together. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.